Hello viewers, welcome to this video. In this video, we will be looking at the November 2016 Science Paper 1. And in this particular session, we will be looking at question B2. Okay, uh, the reason why I'm saying question B2 is that the question is coming from section B and it is question number 2. Question 2 reads, a stone of mass 1 kilogram is dropped from a certain height and takes 8 seconds for the stone to strike the sandy ground. Upon reaching the ground, the stone penetrates 5 centimeters into the ground, taking g to be equal to 10 meters per second squared. A stone of mass 1 kilogram is dropped from a certain height and takes 8 seconds for the stone to strike the sandy ground. Upon reaching the ground, the stone penetrates 5 centimeters into the ground. Take g to be equal to 10 meters per second squared. So question 2a reads, calculate the height from where the stone was dropped. So uh, this question has two parts. Uh, it has a part, it has a part where it is dropped first. Okay, so it is dropped and this is our ground. Okay, now the type of ground we have is not a hard ground, it is sandy. So the, the stone initially there will drop, will drop through, the, through a height H, through a height H and in dropping to that, uh, through that height, it will take eight seconds okay now upon the reach uh, upon the the stone reaching the ground it further proceeds and penetrates into the ground okay going down five centimeters so we have the first part and the second part so for for this particular question calculate the height from where the stone was dropped we only consider the part where it took eight seconds and knowing very well that the stone was dropped meaning that the initial velocity of the stone was zero meters per second and it took eight seconds so we have our time is equal to eight seconds then the other thing that we have is g g is equal to 10 meters per second squared now having all this not knowing uh, the height so we have an equation that has initial velocity time and acceleration and it is h is equal to ut plus half g t squared okay so h is equal to zero times zero times eight plus half times ten times 8 squared 8 squared is 64 okay so 0 times 8 is 0 plus half times 10 is 5 5 multiplied by 64 is 320 so 0 plus 320 will give us a height of 320 meters so the height from where the stone was dropped was 320 meters all right we proceed to the next question and the next question is saying calculate the kinetic energy of the stone on reaching the ground kinetic energy of the stone on reaching the ground again we refer back to our diagram so when the stone was at that height h all the energy because it was not moving so all the energy that the stone had was gravitational potential energy and when it comes to kinetic energy at that particular height it, the kinetic energy because it was not moving therefore the kinetic energy was zero joules but when the stone started dropping the gravitation of potential energy started dropping because the height was dropping and because the stone is accelerating so the velocity of the stone keeps on increasing hence the kinetic energy starts to increase 
when the height is zero now this is at the point where it is just about to strike the ground the height is equal to zero at this point so therefore here the gravitational potential energy gravitational potential energy now becomes equal to zero and all the energy that the stone has is it due to the kinetic energy okay now if you remember the law of conservation of energy the law of conservation of energy states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed but can only be transformed from one form to the other or transferred from one form to another so here the energy transfer is between gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy i can go on and on talking about this but what uh the question is all about is that at this point just before striking the ground the kinetic energy is equal to the gravitational potential energy at the starting point and the gravitational potential energy at the starting point is equal to m g h okay and knowing that the mass is one and the acceleration due to gravity is 10 and the height is 320 just as calculated uh, uh, in a above so 1 times 10 is 10 10 times 320 is 3200 so this is 3200 joules so the kinetic energy is 3200 joules so that was the kinetic energy all right we proceed to c we proceed to c c is saying calculate the average retarding force calculate the average retarding force calculate the average retarding force now this question is relatively easy or relatively difficult if you may take it the level of difficulty is that you need to calculate a lot of things just for you to get the two marks okay for example uh you need to calculate uh the the velocity of the stone just before it strikes the ground just before it strikes the ground okay using that velocity okay you also need to calculate the acceleration okay then calculate the force however there is a theorem there is a theorem that can help us find this force without doing much of the calculations using the calculations that we already have okay and it is called the work energy theorem it is called the work energy theorem work energy theorem and this theorem just states that uh work done by a given substance is equal to the change in kinetic energy the work done by a substance is equal to the change in kinetic energy mm. so we can say that work is equal to uh, the kinetic energy after which is the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy okay however however we are not looking for work we are looking for force so we know again that uh, work is equal to force multiplied by distance okay and the distance will be in the direction of what of the force so it means that uh, force is equal to work divided by distance we know the distance covered and it is five centimeters okay we know the distance covered and it is five centimeters therefore we can say that the retarding force is equal to the kinetic energy after so the stone when it's try when it 
hit the ground, it penetrated the ground and covered a distance of five centimeters. After that, what happened to the stone? It stopped. Now, the kinetic energy of any object that is not moving is zero. Okay, so we'll have zero minus the kinetic energy of the stone before, just before striking the ground. And what is the, that kinetic energy? The kinetic energy we just calculated in B. So which is 3,200 joules. Therefore, the average retarding force, the retarding force, no, 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 wait yes okay uh-huh so uh just thought i made a mistake there no i didn't so this is the force now we are saying that this on top what we've just calculated here is the work then we divide this by the distance and what is the distance five centimeters now five centimeters is five the centi means times 10 to the power negative two then that becomes a meter, okay? Meaning that this is going to be 0 minus 3,200 will be negative, will be, this will be equal to negative 3,200 divided by uh, 0 0.05, okay? Divided. 3,200, 3,200, 3,200 uh, divided by 0 0.05, that is 64,000, 64,000. So it will be negative 64,000. So this F is equal to negative 64,000 what newtons now they've said average retarding force so retarding we know that it is pointing in the negative direction so we will just multiply that by negative one so that it becomes positive because it is already a retarding force so it's 64,000 newtons so the correct answer is 64,000 newtons thank you viewers for watching the video uh, if you are new to the channel please don't forget to subscribe if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you are new to the channel please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell thank you very much